What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Today is Best Served Podcast 272, and we are talking marketing mindsets. This is Best Served New Volume 1. We've been chronicling and coaching Meta Asian Kitchen. This is episode 9 of 10, and this series, as you know, is one of the most exciting things to me that we do at Best Served, the opportunity to, to help guide entrepreneurs as they get into their food and beverage journey, as they develop their businesses, as we are in the ever-evolving landscape of food and beverage, now more than ever. So exciting. Definitely check out the full series. There's links in the comments to playlists for the full series. Last week, we talked about rethinking from menus to websites. We're going to get into some of what we learned there. And then next week, we wrap the series December 10th with the digital ordering mission critical right now, especially for Ken and Doris as they navigate into carry out and delivery only as well as their virtual kitchen concept. And as always, what we're doing holistically on Best Served is we are really trying to break down these industry standards. You know I love my air quotes because they just do not serve you. You can check every single box of these benign industry standards that somebody at some point made up that just do not work for operators. And that is why we have such high churn rates of people, why 60% of restaurants close. We believe there is a new way to approach, which is why Best Served New is, again, so fundamentally important to me. All right. I want to bring Ken and Doris in now. Good to see you too. Uh, hello. Hello. All right. So we're almost at the end here, nine of 10 episodes, and we're really getting into your ability to communicate with your audience, right? And so last week, really eye-opening, it really shifted a lot of things. I am so excited. We got to touch on the chicken dumplings, right? We've menu costed them, we've tested new ingredients to use, we've tried to think about how we tell that story. And then last week, there was a aha moment where it said V from everything food really crystallized it said we need to rebrand that product we need to tell a story from the very inception of people reading that menu item right and so Chinatown dumpling was born I am so fired up about the Chinatown dumpling which gives us an opportunity to tell a story mm -hmm. it tells one part of a story of Zhao Zi which is right Cantonese for dumpling we want to talk about that a little bit more Chinatown also creates a sense of place which is so important and especially very personal to the two of you because when you think of Meta Asian when you think of that dumpling the two of you me as well right we think about Manhattan we think about Chinatown. We think about those memorable moments and we want to transport people there. So uh, touch on quickly, Chinatown Dumpling. Why did that become like the new branding for the chicken dumpling? Well, you know, um, our dumplings are inspired by our time spent in Chinatown. And, you know, when Ken and I were working on this recipe, we were trying to replicate those flavors. So there's no better name than calling it Chinatown Dumplings, right? Yeah. Like, it was, a, it was an actual dumpling that we got from Chinatown and we would eat it all the time. Like we would just like buy a bunch of bags from them frozen, cook it at home and just make it how we actually make it now at Meta. And we just, I did the best to my ability to replicate that dumpling just simply by just tasting and figuring it out on my palate and then incorporating it into the recipe. I love it because chicken dumpling, it doesn't elicit a follow up <laughs> question. Like it doesn't start a conversation. Chinatown dumpling starts a conversation and that's what we're trying to do with food always, especially our leading product, our number one selling item. So, so important. Now people go, why is that the Chinatown dumpling? Well, let me tell you about Chinatown, what it means to me, that story mm -hmm. that has value. And we're going to get into that because we know that we have to charge more for that product and all of your products and the storytelling gives us that opportunity because they're not buying chicken and dumpling. They're buying Chinatown, Ken and Doris, Meta Asian, right? They are buying the story. They're buying a connection. They're buying a sense of belonging, the sense of place that we talked about. So that's super important. So we're going to get in that. We're going to bring in a, a couple voices today. Kim Lai Yingling is going to join us in a moment, as well as Priya Shah. We're going to talk about your ability 
to create content, to deliver on that message, to communicate directly to your audience. We're also gonna talk about how we then take those pieces of content, that communication, and put it on all the different platforms from social media that allow us the opportunity to continue to stay top of mind, to stay relevant, to become a part of their story as well, which is so fundamentally important. So Kim Lai, I wanna bring you on now. Very good to see you. Hi, Hi guys. All right, so Kim Lai, huge content creator and you're a contributor everything from aol msn huffington post the daily meal uh what what am i forgetting ktla is, i've seen you on several times oh, channel. Cooking, yes. channel. <laughs> the cooking channel all of it right channels. your ability to bring cooking and then especially with eatenasian.com your personal site to bring that into their home has been very powerful. And that's really what I want to siphon some of that superpower for Ken and Doris today. The ability to bring the story, the cooking, the food, the people into somebody's home, that is going to be mission critical. Absolutely so, so important for Ken and Doris. So I want to get into that a little bit. And I want to use, again, the Chinatown dumpling as an mm -hmm. opportunity to tell that story. So Kim, I start us at the beginning. You're thinking about the Chinatown dumpling. You're thinking about Ken and Doris's need to communicate with their audience and go. How do we get there? <laughs> okay. Well, first, I just want to say, you guys, I went through your TikTok and was I was just trying to catch up with you guys and watch some of the backstories. Mm -hmm. And there was one TikTok in particular that really got my attention. This will all wrap around to the Chinese <laughs> the, um, Chinatown dumpling in just a minute. But there was a TikTok and it was the chicken wings mm -hmm. and you were talking about how it was Ken's favorite thing to eat. And you had a VO, um, you were just talking about the history of it and why it was so important. And it's like, Oh my God, all your TikToks, like you should be doing a couple of those a week because the history, like food, I think food, there's such a history with food and people feel so connected mm -hmm. when they eat food. And right. you guys have that history from you're growing up with to like with your doors, your your dad bringing, you know, your mom and dad not thinking that I don't think any Asian parents think getting into the yeah. culinary world is a good thing. Right. Um, I <laughs> Doctor, know engineer, yeah. lawyer. Yeah. Yes. Or my mom was always keen. Why don't you marry a pharmacist? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, that doesn't seem fun. Like, why would I do that? <laughs> but. I think that that story, so many people can resonate, resonate, resonate with those stories, you know, and your dumpling has a story. And I think the best way is one, you can never talk about the family history, what brought you guys here. I know both of you guys have that backstory. You can never talk about it enough mm -hmm. because you know, I used to go to a friend, she's a comedian, and it's like eight or nine later, it's the same, she's doing the same shtick. But you know what? Every eight or nine times, it's a different audience. Mm -hmm. So you're always gonna have a different audience. Your story will never get old. And that story needs to parlay into the dumplings, obviously. I think it would be great to get the dumplings to people at home, to let them touch and feel them. I know you guys, that, that sounded odd. I know you guys make different sauces mm -hmm. and I feel that the pandemic and everything that's happening while I know a lot of restaurants are struggling, it's also a really good time to think outside of the box and other ways that you can get your food into people's home because dumplings are comfort food yes. and right. right now people need comfort. They might not necessarily be able to come to where you are located. So why not have the comfort food going to their home? Why not mm -hmm. make dumpling kits, you know, where you can even like, you can have your dumplings in there. You could have a little card in there that talks a little bit about the story. I went to the website as well. And mm -hmm. the story, they're like the story. I did not grabbed by any particular story. There needs to be more of the two of you weaved in throughout the website weaved in throughout your TikTok. this story is what's going to sell the product that's people want to know your story they want right. to feel a part of it and then they'll feel they feel a part of you they'll feel a part of the food then they want to support more and you know everybody loves 
getting little packages at home. And if you guys did like some dumplings and inside, like you had the ingredients to make the sauces, mm -hmm. you know, like have little containers with the different sauces and then a little bit about your story and background and then a little like how to like they can mix the sauce themselves and this right. is like giving them a piece of you guys you know so it's like oh they're experiencing what you guys do in the kitchen you know what i mean right they're able to do it too i mean i just think that any time you guys have a product and that you can get it into other people's homes is a good thing and it also is it's another stream of revenue for you because this doesn't yeah. have to stop when the pandemic stops yes you know? yeah. and if the chinatown dumpling if those kits go so well i mean you can do them with other things too you know what i mean but yeah. i think yeah. getting doing the social media like the TikToks and just getting your story more out there and you can do it on a lot of things like the different ingredients or um you know why these noodles mean so much to you why you guys use egg roll wrappers instead of wonton wrappers you know mm -hmm. just short brief snippets but it does allow the viewer to come in and feel like they're a part of your story you know what i'm saying yeah kim i get i get jump in you got you got my brain really, really going. There's a couple things that are important. One is what you're talking about. And again, Ken and Doris, I'm going to keep I hammer this home again and again and again, right? For us, we, we call it get clear on your story, right? Mm -hmm. That is what you're trying to do. That's what you need to accomplish. Get clear so that everybody else feels it. They know it. It's intuitive. It's natural. It's authentic to you, which is exactly what Kim Lai is talking about. So, so important. The other thing is, the gift part, when you said that, Kim Lai, that is huge. I think right away of Chinese culture and the red envelope, right? And okay. think about, yes, like think well, about I the way that a gift is given in Chinese culture. Can you introduce yeah. that to Denver in a meaningful way, in a personal way, right? Can you also be creative in right QR codes? Everybody's doing QR codes. Mm -hmm. Can a QR code go, go directly, put on a bag of the dumplings, go directly to your TikTok video telling that story? Because then when they're eating those dumplings, they are eating a piece of history, a piece of your story. And right. damn it, does that taste much, much better than just a chicken dumpling. So I think it's important. Kim Lai, get back into it. I love where you're that, going with that. You, that just cracks me up. So I just put a <laughs> I just put a prototype together for a spring roll to go kit. Um, and <laughs> I use a red envelope. And of course you do. Are, it makes sense. People are like, and you know, you the red envelope. I mean, some of them I don't know what they say. So obviously, yeah. you can make sure to get some like for the new year. You know, holidays is a great time right now, you guys, with the dumplings. Um, but you can uh, in inside the red envelope are the directions of what to do because it's mm -hmm. a gift, right? I mean, I know it's not money, but it's as valuable as money. More valuable. Come on. <laughs> yes. And inside would, you know, is are the directions. And then there's a link. You can follow this link to go to a website, which could be your guys' website, which could be links to, you know, your journey. These mm -hmm. 10 episodes, well, I think this is nine, right? But yeah. the 10 episodes that you will have, this is your journey. You guys should also monetize this into like, this is what it took for us to get there. You can do a little intro video first, where mm -hmm. it's just two of you talking, you know, get a good camera angle and like have Ken talk about what I think your mom calls you something in the kitchen, like super chef or something. <laughs> on one of the, <laughs> the past yes. ones. But it's like people can relate to that, like the mom and her son, you know, and then Doris with you and then your parents. It's like, just talk, don't like talk forever about it, but just, you know, a little bit, just really get to some of the heart of some of the things and some of the struggles, mm -hmm. some of the struggles. I mean, people really love watching those struggles and success Hustle. coming from those struggles. You know what I mean? And man, I cannot stress this enough. Is that whole Asian thing, Asian people coming here, the parents wanting them to have a better life, you know, same as me, except I had one white, one Asian, but the you know wanting you to have a better life and then you choose a path that's not necessarily well probably that has the most struggle you yeah. know because it's not easy like you said one one of you guys were talking about how your mom was saying you know, what do you want to do in a kitchen you're just going to sweat yeah 
their mentality is so different. And I think that that's, it's such a special thing because that struggle, you don't find that struggle necessarily here mm -hmm. with Caucasian. How do you say Caucasian? We're, we're all Americans. Is it Caucasians? Uh, it's round eye. Guy <laughs> Jean. <laughs> it's, it's, it's different for people of different ethnicities because it, there's just more, there's a struggle, you know, because they come from, you know, my, we have parents that come from third world countries. You know what I'm saying? And so, but we come here or we're born here and then it's just like, we just want something so different. And so just sharing those challenges, people love those stories. You know, I'm sure you have some stories of me, maybe, maybe of you cooking with your mom in the kitchen, you know, or both of you cooking with your parents in the kitchen in some sort of when you had that aha moment of when you just knew that the creation of food and making people happy because they're eating that food, your food, you had those aha moments. And I think mm -hmm. you share those. Those should be incorporated in your story, which is selling your food, you know? Um, I just think that also lends to having repeat customers because people tune yeah. in. I really think you guys can, I really think you guys can do something with your story and parlay it for many, many episodes and have people follow you along with your journey. You know, I mean, Kimai, I, I want to touch on yeah. something that you've done so well is you very much are now a voice for the Asian American community, especially in L.A., right, that you've positioned yourself very well as that, that when there's a discussion needing to be had or wanted to be had around something with eating Asian, eating Asian, mm -hmm. right, you're somebody they come to. And I think when we bring Priya and we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit more on some of the tactical ways that. But I absolutely see Ken and Doris being that voice in the mm -hmm. Denver market, right? Yes. That they are the ones communicating and representing that Asian American experience within this market, within this community. So any any tactical advice, any things they should be thinking about, any ways that you've been able to position yourself that way that they could potentially you know, learn from and put themselves in that position as well? Okay, well, you know what? I was watching an episode... Okay, I don't know if this was on Insta TikTok or if it was one of these nine, but um, Ken was specifically talking about the crab and cheese wonton. Or no, I'm sorry, maybe it was Doris. Both of you were talking about the crab and cheese wonton and how it was selling out and people just wanted to keep ordering that. You guys were like, oh, how could you know? Is this what we really want to do? Is crab and cheese right. wonton? But what struck me was how you guys talked about how you used egg roll skin instead of wonton skin. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think where you guys are at. You are in such a great position to introduce what do you call Denverians, Coloradians, Denverites, <laughs> whatever you call them. You're in a great position to introduce your food to those people, to the people, to your neighbors. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yes, of course, they want what they're familiar with. It's going to take them time to get familiar with what you're doing, but you've already started incorporating yourselves into that because you're switching out the types of skin, you know, the wrap, mm -hmm. your skin, the type of wrap that you're using, you know, but now it's like slowly, why don't you start incorporating different ingredients mm -hmm. ingredients that mean something to you? I mean, it's, it's a slow to get there, you know, but everything takes time to get to be great, you right. know, but you can take some of the things that, ugh. You know, crab and cheese. I'm like, oh, how Chinese is that? But you can totally start playing around with it and incorporating it. And you know, when people come by, you can play around a lot. Like, take it to the extreme. And, hey, why don't you guys taste this? Da, da, da. Or when you guys are doing like the the dumpling to go kits, mm -hmm. why don't you throw a few in there? Throw some of the new stuff, you know, and then let them try it. Well, I don't know if they'll be that fresh. They might have to fry it. Yeah, I don't think everyone has a fryer at home. Everyone knows how to fry, but it's like they'll be like, "Oh my god, oh we never knew." They're ordering what they're ordering because they don't know any different, you know. Yes. So it's your job. It is your job to educate them, you know. Just like with the soy sauce packets, that was a really good episode, by the way. <laughs> um, the, the, the Yumi lady is like, "Wow, she's so Asian savvy. I like her." Oh yeah, she's <laughs> the best. <laughs> of my mom always saying to me, Gabe, unique business model is Asian business model. <laughs> and she totally reminded me of that. But it's just like you, you know, getting frustrated with the soy sauce packets. Right. Don't have them. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and I, I was so going to tell you guys to do the little containers and then pff, I'm watching her more. And she's like, I do little containers. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you could do the little containers and totally limit it, you know? And just like, Oh, we, oh, you, you want some sauce? Okay, yeah, we do have these. And you know what? You don't even have to put soy sauce in the containers. <laughs> or you put in your own special sauce. And then when they're like, if they taste it, they're like, that was really good. But what was it? It's like, it's our special sauce. It's Meta's special sauce. So we only limit. It's one customer. <laughs> but you know what that does? That opens up later for you guys to sell and oh, bottle yeah. the special sauce. Yes. So it's like there's so many things. But yeah. God, you guys have so much yeah. opportunity to really teach people. And so take that frustration of people always ordering the norm and just think of it like that's all they know. You know, we never stop learning. You have to continue to teach them what they don't know. Just like you made fried rice, but it was your fried rice. It might not necessarily be fried rice that Caucasians are used to having, but I'm sure they liked it. And they probably didn't even understand, like, they probably didn't even know that there's a different, so many different Yeah, types. we've been told that our fried rice is life-changing, so. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I like it. They wouldn't have known that if you wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, I'm not, I don't believe, like, when my mom growing up, she's always telling, her recipes are different from my recipes because she would always Americanize them. Because when she came here, she didn't speak English and she didn't have any Asian friends. So she's had to make her food more appealing, you know, to Americans. So it was less fish sauce, less spices. Um, and it's like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not down for that at all. It's like, you guys have your way of what you like to eat. That's your comfort food. That's authentic to you. That's the food that you need to be selling. That's the story that you need to be selling. That's the only way people are going to learn that there's a different story. There's a mm -hmm. different fried rice. There's a different dumpling. Why are your dumplings so much tastier than the dumplings that you buy at our sense? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but your food has a story. And I just, yeah, I think get the stories really tight and sell the story always. Yes. Kim, I, I'm going to follow up with you and connect you with, um, with Ken and Doris because there's one last thing that I want to get some tactical advice with them on. We're out of time now. But oh, sure. your, your ability to make it simple for people to make the eaten Asian recipes at home. And mm -hmm. sometimes I struggle with this. I know Ken will as well. We are telling another chef how to make our dish, not somebody who's never touched dough before, who's never touched plum sauce before, oyster sauce before, fish mm -hmm. sauce before. And so I think your ability to like make it easy because it's a it's a big, long chasm for them to jump across to go from what they know now yes. to Jiao Z. Like that is a big leap. We have to create those pebbles that they can jump across. We need yeah. to make it simple for them. And I want to follow up on that because that's something you've done sure. very, very well as you've created a bridge so that people have trust and confidence in you mm -hmm. and feel like they can get there. They can get to the other side and you're their guide. Fundamentally important for you, Ken and Doris, to be the guide. This is what Kimla is talking about right now. So I, I really appreciate that. Kimla, any last thought? This was amazing. No, I just, gosh. Well, I want dumplings. I would, I really would like to try some dumplings from you guys. Yeah. Um, Ken and Doris, now you have to figure out how to ship your dumplings. Oh, to God. LA. Oh. Let us figure out how to deliver it first. <laughs> I think this is great. You know, this is not easy. The stats for opening up a restaurant, you already know. And I know you already talked about them in one of the episodes. So already, like, congratulations, you guys, for doing what you're doing and caring for the employees that you have and going through this pandemic. But always look at it like this is a good opportunity to be even better because mm -hmm. it is absolutely forcing you to think outside that box. And in the long run, it will be for the better. For sure. Thank you. Mic drop. That's it. Kim Lai Yingling, thank you so much. You. Uh, a, a lot of knowledge siphoned today. Really, really appreciate it. And you did so much background. I really appreciate that. As well. <laughs> you, knew, you knew their whole story and oh, you told you. their story back to us. That's why you're good. Love it. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. All right. Yes. All of that. You Love get all her. that? I saw you taking notes. That was serious. Yeah. This is how you can tell that story. And I'm serious about this. The next time I turn on local 
television, which I never do. So that's not going to happen. I'm lying if I say that that's going to happen. But somebody will share a clip with me. Andrew Parr will share a clip with me of the two of you or can you in your whites and the walk and the steamers talking about how you are contributing to the Chinese American experience, that is going to change everything for you. And I absolutely believe why couldn't the two of you be that voice for the Denver market? You sh could, you should. If you apply everything we're talking about, if you get clear on your story and you understand how to deliver that story, that's going to be hugely impactful. And so I really, really want to see that for the, for the two of you. So, all right, we're going to dig a little deeper into this and let's bring in Priya Shah to speak with us now. Priya, good to see you. Hi, guys. So this is great because Priya, one, has been working with you on this story. So we've been going back and forth mm -hmm. and it started to really crystallize our story around the walk. Now the Chinatown dumpling, you've had Priya support, which I think is important. And I like Priya, I like, I like everything about the way your brain works. I especially like that you've been able to work with big brands, you know, from Panera Bread and Arby's, things like that, all the way to like the really chef driven single operator locally focused in Atlanta, Nashville, now Denver. And so I like that you can kind of siphon, look, those big brands do a lot of things really, really well. And sometimes we purely demonize them because we think that, that we're something different and we are. Yet the ability to tell stories and connect and get into people's homes is something they do fundamentally well that I think I really wanna, again, siphon some of that superpower. So. That's what we're gonna get into a little bit. I wanna talk a little bit about kind of brand unity, something that restaurants really struggle with. Kimla, I mentioned, I got on your website and I didn't get the story, right? I went on that TikTok and I was all in on your story. And so our ability to tell that story consistently across every touch point and every platform that we're interacting with is something that I wanna get into, something that you do well, brand sure. consistency. And then I also did wanna to touch a little bit further on some of your thoughts on I really think that Ken and Doris could absolutely be positioned to be somebody continuously contributing to the voice of the Asian American experience, culinary experience in the Denver market. But let's start with brand unity. Let's get into that a little bit. What do they need to be doing? What do we need to be thinking about? Push us a little bit because sure. you know, we're stuck in the kitchen a little too much and we don't think about marketing <laughs> because marketing, Ken and Doris, yes. 5% of your so gross <laughs> revenue has to be spent on marketing. No, almost no restaurants spend enough money on marketing. We always think that mm -hmm. if we just make good food, people are going to come. It's not the reality. And especially as you get more in a carry out delivery, virtual kitchen, you have to be so good at marketing and marketing is storytelling with a budget. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So Priya, <laughs> get into a brand unity a little bit. Break it yes, down. Yes. And I, I think it's funny that you mentioned the whole element of that. If we build it, they will come mentality. I like to call it the culinary field of dreams. And <laughs> it is just, it is so hard because we are living in a world where there is competition everywhere. And even in Denver, I think one of the things that's really fascinating with the two of you coming from the East Coast is that you're kind of in this mindset of what you know. You're you're coming from a city that has more diversity, that they they understand the different nuances of being Asian, that we aren't lumped into one bucket, that every culture has its own cuisine in China. I mean, there's different cuisines within the country itself. You're coming up against somebody who doesn't understand that, yeah. um, particularly because this market is becoming more diverse, which is amazing. And we're so excited for it. But we also have a little bit of a learning curve. So some of the things that you think are just basic information or that you think, oh, everybody knows this. Nope. They don't. They don't. So even if it feels like you're a broken record, we have to keep telling the story. We have to keep telling the little minute details. Mm -hmm. I know when we started working together and I just said, you know, let's spend two, three hours and tell me everything. Don't hold anything back. And while we're talking, things would come up that were really important, that really solidified what makes you guys so much different than everybody else, not only here in Denver, but in New York, in LA, we all have our unique story. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the best ways to do that, to share our unique story is to really make sure that we're utilizing our channels properly. So obviously there's a lot of different ways that we can share a story. You have your website, which is kind of that basic place that people go, but you also have this opportunity like Kim Lai was saying, to share your story 
across these other channels that are more directed towards certain types of learning, as I like to think. Mm -hmm. So obviously with a TikTok, you have very limited, limited time, but you have a lot of opportunity to do video. Same with, you know, you have Instagram, but you also have IGTV. So it's the little tidbits to get them interested, the longer story to lead them to IGTV. Same with Facebook. So really thinking about the audience and diving into the not as fun side, but really understanding the analytics behind Facebook and who that intended audience is, and then catering conversation and the conversation it what leads to the education which is what leads to people feeling like they're a part of your story and so if you are putting out posts that's great what i'm looking for is create the opportunity for somebody to learn something from you for somebody to ask you a question the post just creates the opportunity so we really 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 need to be thinking about that we get too caught up on what day and time should i post and it's important obviously get tactical yeah. Sorry. That's not what I'm focused on. What I'm focused on is does your content create an opportunity? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> is, uh, it is, is it time to start making going. Chinatown dumplings? Is that what's happening right now? Someone's trying to make, place an order, I think, is what's happening right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to turn it off on my laptop. We're just going to have to let it ring in the background until it stops. Uh, <laughs> sounds All like right. an alarm. Oh, here it is. Here it is. is it done? It's, it's 2020. Fun. This is real shit right now. This is what happens. <laughs> you roll with the punches. You keep going. You keep making Chinatown dumplings. So that's what I want to make sure you really mm -hmm. focus on. It's an opportunity. Now, I want to point out something, Priya. I know you see this a lot. And sorry, Ken sure. and Doris, I I'm going to pick on you a little bit in this moment. I saw the post that you put on Instagram and then also put on Facebook where you basically announce the renaming of the Chinatown dumpling. And honestly, like I got a little choked up. It was like, I told my wife, Betsy, I was like, this is everything that I'm working towards is to have Ken and Doris have the opportunity to create the Chinatown dumpling because I know what that means. I know the impact that that can have on your business. And so I was so moved by that. And I didn't even see it because you, you sent it directly from Instagram to Facebook because I could tell you still had the ats and everybody's Instagram handles, and that doesn't actually tag you on Facebook. And so I didn't see it until I happened to scroll past it, and you had posted it like four hours earlier. So you have to be relevant on Facebook. So the copy and paste mentality, because it's quicker, we gotta get away from that. Mm -hmm. We gotta focus on, have the impact on each platform. You can use the same exact verbiage, okay. but you need to be native in that platform so that you get the impact. Mm -hmm. Because if on Facebook you tag me, best serve, V, everything food, your ability, you know, everything food has 53,000 likes on Facebook. You tag them, it creates the opportunity for their audience to see you. That post has the opportunity to have a huge impact in engagement opportunity for you if you take the time to be Instagram native and Facebook native. Priya, take us there, because I know you see that yes. a lot. Of We're trying to rush <laughs> I do, I do, and I think it's that, that whole element, especially when it comes to, I know Ken and Doris, they're very busy. They're, they have their hands in a lot of things that they're trying to get done. And I see this with a lot of the restaurants that I work with, that they kind of get to this point, and I've heard this before of, oh, I just wanted to get it out. I understand. I wholeheartedly understand, but I do want to so say- We're so impatient. <laughs> people are so impatient, Priya. We talked about that. Quite they are, time they time. are. But I think it's also this element of kind of thinking, oh, I'll be fine. I got it done. Check off the list, you know, done for the day. But it's this whole thought of, for me, it's a quality over quantity. So if you don't have time that day to do it the right way, don't do it. Because is that like you have to think about from the long term perspective, is that what you want your brand to look like? So would you rather wait until tomorrow to post it when you know you have time, you know, you can really think through how you want to caption it, making sure you're tagging people, making sure that if it's on 
Instagram, if it's a video, it's going to fit within the time, you know, all of those little, little details that matter a lot. If you don't have time to think about them, don't worry about it today. I would rather you do it tomorrow and do it the right way. Yeah. And this, this brings up, this brings up a good point. It's interesting. I'm going to say yes. And to that pre, because I think it's important. What I talk about a lot is again, get clear on is our focus, get clear on how we get it out there. Now, I'm big on volume because the point the eight, nine cycles, and then people haven't seen that episode, haven't heard that story again, I think is important. Mm -hmm. So quality and quantity, the way that I see that is you work with Priya now to understand everything about your story and understand everything about the way you communicate that story on all of your platforms, all of your channels, right? So that you've done the thinking ahead of time. You've done the prep work so you can knock out those dumplings three, four, five minutes and get them out the door. It's the same mentality. So if you get caught making those dumplings to order, you're screwed. You know that, right? You do right. your prep work ahead. You got to do the same thing with social media. You have to do oh, the same thing with your message so that you can put out seven pieces of content in one day because you already know everything. You're just filling in the blanks. You're just creating the nuance and the context of that day. Because I also, Pri, I know you see this, they get, we get petrified, we get paralyzed by not knowing what hashtags to use, not knowing what well, the beginning of the month, plan out the hashtags that are relevant at that time, and then copy and paste them because you've already cataloged those. You already have an archive, you've already built in segments of your story. Priya can break down your story into 32 pieces that you post every single day over a month, you can do that ahead of time if you understand your story. If we're not being reactionary to, oh shit, we made something, I gotta post it today. Well, you knew you were gonna make that two weeks ago. You could have planned to make that a month ago, right? So you can plan and lay out your story so that you don't get crippled by, I don't have enough time. Right. Because the reality and is- I, And I do uh, think that that's so important. Um, I'm a huge believer in planning. I mean, um, as Doris oh, knows, God. I I'm always like, oh, what are we doing next year? Oh, you know, we met back in September. Oh, what are you guys doing for Chinese New Year? I know it's February 2021, but we need to start planning this. We right. need to start thinking through how are we going to build up to it? What are we going to do for it? What are we going to do after it? All of those things are so important. So I wholeheartedly agree with what you're saying, Jensen, of, you know, have a kind of a template of what you want to do throughout the month. You know, have the content already kind of ready. Also be prepared, though. I think it's also important to have those moments that you do mm -hmm. want to share. That's what stories are for. Right. You know, if you have something cool that's happening that day, right. very right. timely, very relevant, get, get that on stories and still have that other element that you've already planned out. That's the, the building of your story over time. Mm -hmm. Have that on the stuff like your grid and on things that are going to last for a long time. So if somebody does discover you, let's say they, they find you now that you're on DoorDash or something, they find you, they order from you, they want to check you out. They can learn a lot about you by going and scrolling through your old feed to tell mm -hmm. that holistic story. Yeah. And what you get good at, uh, Doris, especially for you is you start to recognize that's a moment right there. That's a moment. And they can be simple things, subtle things, you know, Ken says, hey, we were messing around with this new pleat. What do you think? Stop. Make a dumpling and tell me about that pleat. Why you did that shape? Tell me that. In a 30-second yeah. video, you'll start to recognize that moment as an opportunity to tell that story versus it just happening. And then you're trying to like two weeks from now and then it's been out and then you're not selling it. Yeah. And then you had to throw a bunch away because you didn't sell through them. That's an opportunity to tell that story. So yeah, if you I do think, the work ahead of time, you can recognize those in the moment and still yeah. be in the moment, you know? Yeah, I think a lot of times like, I recognize moments, but we're so busy that it's like hard to stop try to everything. like stop everything and capture the moment. And, um, you know, like I've always told Ken, I'm like, you gotta do that again. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, I'm ready to do it again. And I'm like, oh, like I'm doing something else now, I can't. Yeah. And Ken yeah. needs to start to recognize that. Hey, I'm about to do some cool shit, Doris. Get over here. You know, like you guys can start to understand and recognize those moments ahead of time because I agree, you are too busy. Yet at the same time, too busy is still not an excuse. Mm -hmm. You want to sell the four dumplings for $12? You want Chinatown dumpling to create the opportunity for the dumpling kits? You want to take that two week vacation and not worry, right? Mm -hmm. That's That's what you got to do. And so it's like, putting yourself in a position to be able to capitalize on those moments by recognizing them 
and then being able to execute quickly, efficiently, simply for yourself. That's what you can do. And you're not going to catch every moment. The thing is, what if you catch five more moments or 10 more moments and one of those creates the unlock for $50,000 more in sale? Is that worth it? You're damn right that's worth it. That's the moments. And that's what Priya is really going to like keep pulling and pushing. And it's like, Priya, I've already told you that story. Yes. <laughs> you haven't told me that story on TikTok. You've told me that story on Facebook. And those are the moments. That's the time. That's the prep ahead of time. That's the menu development. I want you to get in the mindset. That's what you're doing for social media. Mm -hmm. right? So that's the opportunity. Priya, this is great. Any last thoughts? I know you're going to be doing a lot more of work. Hopefully this sets yes. some good work and the three of you are going to have a lot more coming out of this. Any last thoughts as we wrap this episode? I mean, I think just overall, you know, also realize this is a growing experience. You are so lucky to be part of this podcast mm -hmm. and have all of these experts kind of sharing all of their insights and, and to really spend the time to digest it. You know, we'll work together, we'll put together a plan, but really thinking through, you know, what resonates with you as well. Um, mm -hmm. we're, think we're talking about authenticity, we're talking about story. For you, it's also thinking, you know, for me, I like this, let's go and run with this. I know in the same vein of, of your food, you guys have melded together your personal preferences. Do the same thing when it comes to your marketing. It's the same thing. I love the symmetry between menu and marketing. Keep it going. Priya Shah, thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you're doing. It means a lot to have somebody like you who, again, has all the street cred in the world from a PR and content marketing standpoint, working with the small independent chef owned, all the frustrations that go with them <laughs> that I know are not easy to work with. Where there's not a whole department that's focused on marketing in like a big brand. It's like, cool, I'm making dumplings. I'm selling the dumplings. I'm giving people the damn soy sauce packets. And I'm trying to be a content creator. Give me a break here. And so I appreciate how difficult and challenging it can be uh, and how important it still is because absolutely Ken and Doris and the like are the very fabric pillars, we call them, of both culture oh, yeah. and commerce in our communities more now than ever as Kim Lai said, we need comfort and we need story and we need to gather, even though we can't gather. And if we can gather around a dumpling kit, well, that matters. So Priya, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you guys. I'm so yeah. excited to, to see what happens after this. <laughs> Lots to happen. All right, Priya, have a great day. We'll talk thank to you, you later. Talk later. All right, Ken and Doris. Lots more notes. Here's mm -hmm. the number one thing about this entire series for me is you all are taking it in and putting it into action. Most important thing, right? I've seen every single week, there has been something, one nugget, two nuggets that you've taken from this and you've put it into action. Have you felt Have you felt that? Have you seen that? Has that, have you yeah, already seen that I shifting think, and having an impact? I think the biggest impact has been the selling those single dumplings for $2. Holy shit, like people buy them. It's ridiculous. I'm just like, wow, we like missed out on so much opportunity to yeah, make no. money. What the hell were we thinking before? Like not letting them buy a single dumpling. So yeah, you know, and then like the renaming convention of our menu, yeah. um, we're definitely gonna do that. You know, we're like creating marketing cards to go with our takeout orders, already got it in the print. So, you know, we're taking everything that we're learning here and implementing it into our um, brand strategy, you know, we understand it's going to take time, but, you know, right. excited that, you know, we're getting all these tips from all the experts in the industry. Yeah. I am so fired up to hear you say all that. It means so much. I can't tell you how, how often I give people advice. It's literally my job all the time. And I give people advice like you should sell an individual dump thing. Go, no, nah, that's not what I do. Eh, I don't know if people are going to be into that. Uh, like it, it seems like it's more work and they just go tunnel vision back into what they know. And you took the advice, yeah, right? And now you're selling it. And now what happens next is we start selling them for $3 a piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that changes everything for you. Yeah. And it really, really matters. So I, I'm, I'm grateful that you listened. So many people don't listen. We are so stubborn in this industry. We just yeah. do what we know. And if yeah. you, know, you did, then you did what you got. That's it. And the two yeah. of you are absolutely showing us that if you're willing to listen and learn, 
there's real upside potential. So I'm grateful. I appreciate that. And I'm excited next week. We're going to get into digital ordering. That's big for the two of you as yeah. the Monty Food yep. Hall, your first location is carry out and delivery only as shutdowns are there. You're mm -hmm. going into a virtual kitchen concept mm -hmm. where you have no opportunity for foot traffic. You have to be 100% able to digitally market yourself to get that attention, to get those butts in seats because there are no seats. They have to find you online and they have to make that purchase. And so we're going to get into that a little bit. Some of the ways that you can create the opportunity for that transaction. Once again, you know me, it's going to be all story and a little bit of tactic, all story, a little bit of tactic, but you need the tactic to be able to execute on that. So that's next week. Appreciate you both. Cool. Uh, this is great. Thank you. Thanks, Jensen. All right. We'll see you next week. All right, everybody. That is it for this episode. Once again, we are in episode nine of 10. This was Best of Podcast 272, Marketing Mindset. Again, we talked some very specific and tactical things. We saw them taking good notes, and we know that they're going to deploy. They're going to execute and implement on those good notes as they've done throughout this series. Yet it's always about shifting that mindset, getting yourself beyond being one of those statistics of the industry standards and creating your own standards, developing your own story, right? We talk about it. Get clear on your story. Get clear on how to get it out there. That is it for today. Thank you all, as always, for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs>